everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we have another craft. Yes, that's right, another Christmas craft. So I'm gonna be upcycling, painting candles today. I know what you're thinking, painting candles, how on earth is that gonna work? There is a few things you need to take into consideration before doing this, before jumping in using the paints you already have. You wanna make sure that your paints are non-toxic, water-based so that when they burn, they're not gonna like give off any toxic smokes, so that they don't burn right or anything. Cause if you're gonna be burning your candles, you're gonna to need to make sure that the paint burns well with it. So the candles that I'm using for the DIY today are these ones here. These just some big like jumbo white candles um this sort of size they're really really big ones actually like typically they're usually around about this sort of size but these are just a little bit kind of longer does it say what size these are 28.7 centimeters by two centimeters they're the better home and gardens branded ones these were a little bit more on the expensive side i actually found these in pound stretcher not a shop i tend to go in but i was on the hunt for these specific candles and they had them in there i think it was four pounds for a set of six which like i said is a little bit on the pricey side especially we can go to other stores like tesco's morrison's just like your standard supermarkets I did take a picture of the morrison ones in there the other day when i was shopping because they're really really nice ones i think you get 10 for like three pounds something but the shape of them are like more like the tapered ones but these ones here like this sort of shape like the straight kind of like pencil looking ones are my favorite so i paid a little bit extra on that but these are the candles that i'm using any white candles will do the trick you can use pillar candles if you want to or anything like that so today i'm going to be showing you how i turned these candles into these ones <laughs> I know, so exciting. Got so inspired by lots of um, pictures and stuff on Pinterest, on Instagram. I know H&M have been like flaunting stripy candles and they haven't been bringing them to the website. And I was like, I need them. So I'm going to find a way to DIY them. I've managed it, very happy. And yeah, the possibilities are kind of endless. So we'll talk to you a little tiny bit about paint. Sorry, I know we want to get into it, but this is the paint that I use, the PBO Studio Acrylics. The reason that I use this one is because when I buy this one anyway, but it is non-toxic. You can see on the back here, there's a little logo there that says like APACMI, Art and Creative Materials Institute Certified. <laughs> I think that says, it's tiny, I don't have my glasses on. But this is sort of the logo you want to look out for for non-toxic paint. You also want to make sure it's water-based, like I said in the introduction. This here is water-based, which is why I've chosen to use this one. But obviously make sure to do your own research and find yourself a water-based paint, non-toxic. Say it again, water-based, non-toxic. That's the type of paint you want. And then you can really just paint on the candles as you wish. There's no big secret to it. I'll show you them burning either on this video or my Instagram or anything so you can see that. Um, but yeah, until then, enjoy the video. So in order to get the stripiness on the candle, I'm just gonna be using the washi tape to kind of map out my pattern. You could do it horizontally or twirly, kind of whirly if you want to. That's what I'm gonna be aiming to do here. So I'm gonna line up this with the bottom of the candle actually i should probably start at the top i'm gonna to start at the top because i made this mistake on a previous candle so i'm just gonna stick that washi tape down this is a 15 mil washi tape like 15 millimeters thick it's from my own kind of business so i know the stickiness of this is really good you don't want anything too sticky so that it'll pull the wax off you also don't want anything too not sticky if that makes sense in fact, I need to start that better. So we need the bottom edge to be like above, like where the candle bit starts, if that makes sense. We wanna be making sure to keep this kind of like free edge as even as possible all the way down, because obviously that's the bit that's gonna be painted. So keep swirling it, going nice and slow. If your tape isn't sticky enough, it's gonna start lifting from the edges and then you're gonna end up with a really messy kind of paint job. I mean, you can also use um, a masking tape if you want to, obviously that's a bit thicker. So I'd recommend a washi tape over masking tape, but if that's all you got, then that's all you've got. Okay, so I made it to the bottom. I'm just gonna make sure it goes all the way off. I'm just gonna rip that and kind of stick it down to the bottom there so that it's all secure. And then I'm just going to make sure that it's all pressed into the candle, all stuck down nice. If there's any creasy bits like there, they're all pressed down and running smooth. So painting wise, I'm really making sure that I've got hardly anything on my brush. I'm just scraping off any excess paint, just like so, so that when I go into the candle, I'm going to be putting on a tiny bit. This is already too much. I can already see that. So I'm just not going to add anything more. I'm just going to kind of really put on a nice base coat around it and I'm making sure to keep 
all of those strokes going in the same direction as the tape. So one, that the paint doesn't go underneath it accidentally. And two, so that all of our brush strokes end up being the same way. And I'm actually pressing it really, really hard onto this to make sure that it's nice and stuck onto the candle. If you find that you have bigger clumps of paint, like in some places, definitely even those out while you can because you don't want it to look patchy or anything. So yeah, just try your best at making this as even as possible. This is why I go in nice thin layers around, building up once each layer is dry. As you can see, I haven't dipped my brush back in at any point yet. I'm still just going with that nice thin layer. For the very top, I am gonna do like a horizontal line across, just kind of where that tapered bit starts and then blend that down. Okay, so carrying on with a little swirly twirly bit, I need to add a bit more paint there way too much but I'm just kind of holding on or trying to hold on to like where the washi tape is so that one it doesn't get all over my hands and two we don't smudge any of that kind of really thin base there we've already put on just to do the rest of it so it's been about 10 15 minutes now I've just let that to dry like air dry you can obviously use a hair dryer because you don't want to melt the candle but this is what it's looking like hopefully you could see that please excuse any gross paint bits on my nails or anything but I do have a little patch here, which is the darker bit where I blended the two bits together and added too much paint. That's definitely what it'll look like if you add too much paint. But as you can see, like throughout, it's a nice even layer with that thin kind of layer on there. So that's basically what we want to achieve and what we want to avoid. Avoid this, go for this. So yeah, next layer. I think all in all, I've done three layers on my previous ones and that worked out great. So that's what we'll do here. And obviously you can see me do that. And we can look at it together. Depending on what colour you're obviously doing these. Um, will depend on how many layers of paint you need. But I find three, I think, to be the right amount. Like I said, the thinner the layer, the better. The less little streaky bits you'll have. It's always kind of inevitable. But, you know, if we can blend them out now, it's going to save you an extra layer or so of building up that paint. Kind of make it nice and even. Okay, I'm just checking in with the second layer. It's looking really good, to be honest, but definitely needs that third on there. Can you see? There's a few little streaks on it. Definitely just something that you end up having. I've also got a little bit of build up along the edge of the tape there. Um, but yeah, we'll get that done with the third layer. So I'm going to do that just off camera. You've seen how I do it now, just light layers. Okay, third layer on. I'm pretty happy with that. So time has come. I'm going to peel this. The third layer is still wet, but I find I get a better peel if I do it when it is wet. So just going to unpeel this. Okay, there we go. A few little dodgy edges on that, but that's fine. If you get that, you can just scrape off the paint just ever so slightly, neatening up if you've got nails. If not, like a little needle will do. Um, just to go back in and refine some of those bits. Now this paint is going to be like a scratchable. It's going to scratch off really, really, really easy. So definitely not be doing that. This is obviously for display purposes only. No one's going to be touching mine. If you found any bits that are just like a little bit, just not very good, definitely just go in and touch those up. And now I'm going to leave that to dry just overnight basically. Hopefully that'll set it a little bit better. While I was working on that one, I also did this one here, just so that there was the exact same coloured red. Instead of putting the tape like twirly really around, I just put like little loops of it around and just made little tabs so that I could pull it off. So we'll do the final reveal of these ones together. Ready? Just go around like that. And peel this one off here. Oh. There we go. Oh, this one's gorgeous. Nice little stripy one like that. Look at it. So nice. Okay, so yeah, like I said, this is how the candles have turned out. I will be showing how I style them and everything like that in future videos and everything. But for now, I'm just going to be popping them into the jar so you can see them kind of in situ. I love this kind of like diagonal stripe. Love the stripey stripe too. I just think they're so cute, so on trend. You could definitely do these in any colours that you want to. You can also do any design on there really with any type of paint. So I'm probably going to be bringing you some more designs coming soon. So yeah, thank you so, 
so much for tuning in today's video. If you do end up recreating these, then be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love to see your creations. I will be back soon with another DIY, another kind of like Christmassy themed video, maybe a shot with me, maybe even a clean with me because I have filmed one. I do want to share that because it's a very chatty one. Till then, I'm going to leave you here. Um, so yeah, bye.